Once a niche habit relegated to only the most elite of nerds and the occasional Halloween, cosplay has recently taken on a life of its own. As genre conventions dedicated to all things geek grow in number like triples, you can't swing a lightsaber without hitting a cosplayer. Many people still don't understand much about this phenomenon or the people who participate in it. Let's get dressed, peel back the curtain, and check out some of the things that everyone gets wrong about cosplay. It's geek exclusive. For an outsider looking in, it's easy to see why some might think that cosplay is limited only to the very finest geeks. Between waiting out the miles of lines just to get into Comic-Con and the level of detail on some of the costumes you see, it's easy to imagine that this is a hardcore members-only club. Even within the cosplay community, there can be some pushback against the notion of more casual fans joining in, so the idea of exclusivity isn't completely unfounded. It's just totally out of place. Whether you're in a head-to-toe Batman costume, Batarangs and all, or just the doctor on Casual Friday, there's room for anyone who wants to throw on some not-everyday wear. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It's a fetish thing. As more people than ever are getting into the cosplay scene, there's more of a focus than ever before on the sexier side of cosplay, more or less bleeding over from the hundreds of sexy Halloween costumes you might see at your local spirit every year. Sexy nurse, sexy anthropologist, sexy toaster oven. They've got them all. The idea is fanned by groups like Cosplay Deviants, who like to show off members dressed in various revealing costumes. Collectively, this gives rise to the idea that everyone into cosplay is very kinky and that the whole affair is just a very specialized form of exhibitionism. Of course, this isn't true for everybody. While there are certainly people who like to show off their bodies, most of the people involved are simply getting a kick out of dressing up. And even if anything carnal is on their minds, it usually doesn't work out too well. Getting down with people in complicated armors or coated in hotel room staining body paint doesn't work out too well. Even when everybody is ready and willing, we can guarantee you that it's going to take pajama steampunk bubble vader a while to slip out of that costume. It's for kids. It's true that a lot of people enter the world of cosplay when they're in high school, and sometimes even earlier. It's also true that young cosplayers have become the most noticeable group in the community, because that group is constantly growing. And what's cuter than a two-foot-tall predator? The truth is that many cosplayers never exactly grow out of it, and they don't have to. Countless sci-fi heroes are closer to being octogenarian Obi-Wans than whiny little Luke Skywalkers. And seeing an age-appropriate Gandalf with actual gray hair is the highlight of any convention. So bring out your William Hartnell doctors and your Master Roshis. You will be welcomed. It's way too expensive. Every day, more and more vendors are selling cosplay guns, costumes, and any highly specific accessory you can dream of. And the price tags on these imaginary items made real isn't usually cheap. After all, hours of labor and research usually go into every inch of every costume. So it's not hard to see where the idea that most cosplayers spend way too much on their costumes comes from. Too much is obviously very relative, but a majority of serious cosplayers pride themselves on doing as much of their own costume fabrication as possible. There's a whole process to it because we like to look the best that we can be. We don't want to look like, oh, you got it at a Halloween costume store. After all, you're not going to find a sassy pink Chewbacca on the rack. Creative cosplayers can put together incredible get-ups for a fraction of the price that a pre-made costume might cost. Sure, it takes time, but everyone needs a hobby, even if it's destroying precious childhood memories by dressing up as a zombie Teletubby. This isn't even taking into account the people who get into professional cosplay and make money from it. If you're really good, you can be hired to appear at product launch events or even become the official spokesmodel for a video game, which is what happened to cosplayer Anna Moleva, who became the face of Bioshock Infinite's Elizabeth. For these cosplayers, money spent on a costume is a career investment. Some people buy stocks, others just buy stockings. It's okay to photograph anyone in costume. It's pretty important to remember that even if someone is dressed up as a fictional character, there's still a real person inside. The idea that all cosplayers want their photo taken at all times, or even have their costume touched just because they're dressed up, is dangerous. It may be hard to resist a pic of that perfectly executed Queen Amidala, but use the force and force yourself to be a normal human being. <laughs> what a wonderful novelty photo this will make! The plague of unwanted touching gave rise to an organization called Cosplay Is Not Consent, which seeks to educate people that, you know, you should probably ask before touching or photographing them, kind of like anyone would. Pretty obvious stuff, right? Nerds gonna nerd. Just ask first. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.